Yeah, what a big surprise. Today I met this wonderful gentleman uh, when he hear me reading the book of Revelation and he was able to explain to me in a much, much better way about what really happened in Ephesians. Uh, in Ephesians. So today, uh, I'm just going to let Mr. Uh, your name, sir? Brendan. Sir? Brendan. I'm just going to let Brendan uh, do the explanation for us. Uh, maybe where are you from, Brendan? From Australia. From Australia. Wow. <laughs> so I'm from Singapore and I met Brendan here in Ephesus. And he's going to help us to understand a little bit more what has happened. Yes, here in Ephesus, there was an amazing time uh, in the, uh, the journey of Paul and his companions. And uh, you can read this, of course, in, in uh, Acts chapter 19, um, where through Paul's preaching, uh, it really uh, uh, had a strong influence in this area. And many people were turning to belief in God in a monotheistic God and the, the, <clears throat> the God uh, with Jesus as our Savior the Son of God, and um, it really upset uh, the uh, silversmiths. Um, there was one silversmith by the name of Demetrius, and uh, he got his group of artisans who were making silver uh, images of the goddess of Artemis, and just close by is the ruins of the um, temple of uh, the goddess of Artemis. Um, and they stirred up a riot to create a huge public disturbance. And they shouted, great is uh, Artemis of the Ephesians mm. and caused a riot against Paul and his companions that involved eventually the Roman authorities here. Mm. Um, and you can read this in uh, Acts chapter 19. 19, yes, mm. excellent. Yes. And you can see how the enemy doesn't want the truth to come in. Yes. Yes. Um, and but God is great. Yes. Eventually, this became a Christian area. Yes, mm. yes. And even right now, as we go around this place, we actually, I, we actually realize that uh, God kept this place, preserved the history. Mm. But you can see that the Turks have actually have taken over this place and actually have tried to rename this mm. place. And so much so that if we really don't find out, we would not even have. Uh, known that this is the place where it was previously called Ephesus. Now mm. they are calling them as Ephes. Mm. Uh, there, there was a lot of renaming going on over here to so-called somehow slowly remove the history. But, mm. but history and, and the truth it is, it cannot be removed. Mm. That's yeah. so true. And you can see this pathway down led to... See the, the uh, area where there's the dried reeds. It's a swamp now, but yes. that used to be the port. Yes. Um, but it's all silted up now, and that's why Ephesus was abandoned eventually, because the port ceased to exist. I see. Um, and uh, it's a river port that came up uh, from the coast into here, and that's why this was such a huge trading area. And it was the, at the time, um, uh, Ephesus was the second largest city in the Roman Empire after Rome mm -hmm. uh, for an, a few hundred years. It right. was really big. But by about 650 uh, AD, this area was abandoned and they moved the city to uh, Selchuk, uh, where it is now. Yes, um, that's what I'm yeah. <clears throat> Because the, the port was silted up and it created, caused it to be abandoned. Right, mm -hmm. right. I see, I see. Wow, thank you so much for, for such a wonderful explanation. And I think uh, we will all really appreciate you, Brendan, for... Joining, joining me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's a pleasure. God bless you. God and, bless you too. And as you visit the seven churches here and relive Acts and relive in Revelation. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. God's word is powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. And your name? I'm Thomas. Thomas. Nice yes. to meet nice you. Nice to meet my you. My wife Esther. Hey, hi Esther. Oh, we didn't get to. Sorry, we didn't get to introduce <laughs> you, Esther. Yeah, it's okay. yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. God bless. Thank you.